What's up guys, this is Vinalik Puma, back with another Borderlands video, and today I wanted to go over 10 of what I think are among some of the best Oz kits from Borderlands the pre-sequel. Now, before we start, I'm including a variety of legendary, unique, and non-unique Oz kits, as otherwise, this entire list would just consist of all of the legendary Oz kits with a few notable non-uniques. Also, remember that just because an Oz kit you like doesn't appear on this list, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, it just means that I didn't include it here. And as always, feel free to let me know what some of your favorite Oz kits are in the comments section below. But without further ado, let's go ahead and start with number 10, and that's going to be the Invigoration Oz kit. While not the strongest Oz kit in the game by any means, for what it is, the Invigoration Oz kit is actually quite good. After all, it can be acquired near the beginning of the game, it has a fairly high O2 capacity, and on top of all of that, the player's HP is restored by about 25% every time they loot an O2 canister. As you can imagine, this makes this particular Oz kit extremely useful for the earlier playthroughs as the player can really take advantage of the ability to restore their health upon acquiring O2 canisters. However, I think you're going to find that other Oz kits are ultimately better later on. After all, the Invigoration Oz kit's starting capacity is pretty high, but this O2 capacity doesn't scale as the player progresses through the game and acquires higher level versions of this Oz kit. I also think you're going to find that this Oz kit is virtually useless in an atmosphere. After all, your ability to acquire O2 canisters, thus being able to replenish your health, is going to be extremely diminished if non-existent. So at the very least, it might be a good idea to have another Oz kit available to substitute for the Invigoration Oz kit when you enter an atmosphere. Still, I think you'll find this is a great Oz kit, and if you do want one, you can get one by completing the Land Among the Stars side quest that's available in Serenity's Waste at the very beginning of the game. You should get a choice between this and the Freedom Oz kit, and obviously, I'd recommend you get the Invigoration Oz kit. Number 9. The Precision Strike Oz Kit even though it's not 100% ideal, the Precision Strike Oz Kit is a great offensive-based Oz Kit that boosts the player's accuracy as well as their critical hit damage while they are airborne. In general, boosts to critical hit damage like this can be very useful across a wide variety of characters, and when properly combined with the right weapons and setting, I think you'll find that the Precision Strike Oz Kit is a great choice. Of course, the only problem with this is that both of these effects are only active while the player is airborne, making this Oz kit mostly effective while the player is in a low gravity scenario. Fortunately, large portions of the pre-sequel take place in low gravity, because otherwise the Precision Strike Oz kits would be pretty useless. Otherwise, there's not really a whole lot else to the Precision Strike Oz kit. If you do want one, it can be acquired from any suitable loot source, like most other non-uniques. Number 8. The Moonlight Saga Oz Kit So, the Moonlight Saga is a duality Oz kit that is known for its low O2 capacity. However, it has lifesteal while the player is in a vacuum, and health regeneration while in an atmosphere. In fact, at 2.5%, the lifesteal here is pretty decent and is actually on par with most of the Moxie weapons from Borderlands 2, like the Heartbreaker Shotgun, as well as the Good Touch and Bad Touch SMGs. The ability to transfer this special effect to any weapon, and essentially make it a moxie weapon, is very useful. The downside is the low O2 capacity, which is something you'll blow through pretty quickly on characters that consume O2. However, in the case of Claptrap, who doesn't consume O2, you can feasibly get by with no O2 at all, and essentially benefit from the bonuses that the Moonlight Saga provides without any of the drawbacks. And with this in mind, I'd recommend that you at least try the Moonlight Saga out on Claptrap, as he can be very effective with it. If you want the Moonlight Saga Oz kit though, your best bet is to acquire one from the Tiny Destroyer mini-boss that appears during or after the Lab 19 side quest that's located in Research and Development. Number 7. The Bomber Oz Kit 
Now, Bomber Auskits are known for providing a boost to grenade damage bonus, as well as the ability to potentially not consume grenade ammo, provided said grenade is thrown through the air. So, essentially, you could potentially throw grenades for free, provided that you have a Bomber Auskit equipped, and also provided you throw the grenade while you are airborne. As you might imagine, this ability tends to be the most useful in situations where you can be airborne for long periods of time, and thus, this particular effect tends to work best while in a low gravity environment. However, even if you're not in a low gravity environment, the boosts to grenade damage bonus are always active, and will be able to not only enhance the damage of your grenades, but also enhance the damage of weapons that can have their damage improved via grenade damage bonus. Ultimately, between the free grenade ammo while airborne and the bonuses to grenade damage bonus, the Bomber Auskit tends to be a great choice, and if you want one, they can be obtained from any suitable loot source. Number 6. The Clear Skies Auskit Now, it was a tough choice between the regular Clear Skies Auskit and the legendary Akak Auskit. While both are sort of similar, I think the Clear Skies may generally be more effective due to the flat damage increase it provides the player. In contrast, the Akak -Ak creates this flacking effect when shooting airborne enemies, in addition to gradually increasing fire rate and reload speed through a sort of stack system. And ultimately, I think because the Clear Skies Auskit's effects are more immediate, that tends to make it a little bit better. Even still, both are pretty great Auskits, and you may find that the Akak -Ak is a little better when going up against mobs, while the Clear Skies is a little better when going up against enemies with a lot of health. At the very least, I recommend that you try both and see what you think, and if you want the Clear Skies Auskit, one can be obtained from any suitable loot source, while the Akak -Ak is a drop from Corporal Bob, which is an enemy that spawns in a few different locations in the Hyperion Hub of Heroism. Number 5. The Duality Oz Kit. So, Duality Oz Kits are available from any suitable loot source and can come in a variety of different forms. However, the general trend is that Duality Oz Kits typically offer a certain set of bonuses that are active in an atmosphere, while another set of bonuses are active in a vacuum. So, you could potentially get a Duality Oz Kit that may boost melee damage in a vacuum while lowering shield recharge delay in an atmosphere. Or maybe you'll find a Duality Oz Kit that boosts explosive damage in a vacuum while providing some sort of shield related bonus. Obviously, Duality Oz Kits can be valuable for the damage bonus that they can provide the player, especially if you can get one that boosts elemental damage as the bonuses tend to be multiplicative. Overall though, I think you should definitely pick these up when you see them, as some Duality Oz Kits can prove to be more useful than some unique and even some legendary Oz Kits. But, like I said earlier, if you want these, they can drop from any suitable loot source. Number 4. The Support Relay Oz Kit. So, the Support Relay is the legendary variant of the Tranquility Oz Kit, which boosts the player's gun damage depending on how much O2 they have. Naturally, this makes this particular Oz Kit far more effective in an atmosphere where the player can consistently keep their O2 reserves at full, thus allowing the player to maintain the additional gun damage bonus provided. Unlike the Tranquility Oz Kit though, the Sport Relay special effect is that it improves O2 capacity in addition to lowering the consumption rate by 20% for each player equipped with a Support Relay. So if every player in your game has one of these equipped, you should get a fairly decent bonus to both of these properties. The only real problem with this Oz Kit is obtaining it as a quest reward through the Two Arms side quest. If my memory serves me correctly, this quest is pretty long and has some annoying requirements like donating 50 white rarity weapons to the quest giver, which is a bit of a hassle in some of the game's later difficulties where white weapons aren't quite as common. Still though, if you're playing co-op or even solo in an atmosphere, this might be a nice Oskit to use, so be sure to get your hands on one. Number 3. The Oxidizer Oskit so, the Oxidizer might just be my favorite Oz Kit on Athena. While it's pretty limited in a vacuum, as it will only passively regenerate the player's health, it's actually quite powerful in an atmosphere, as it greatly increases the chance at which the player can ignite enemies. 
Provided an enemy is ignited, the best part about this Oz kit is that it emits a Nova, which deals damage to enemies while also potentially igniting them, thus causing a chain reaction of sorts. As you can imagine, this is really useful on Maelstrom Athena as you can quickly increase stacks by having multiple enemies on fire, further increasing your elemental damage bonus. However, if you're not using fire elemental weapons, or if you're in a vacuum, you're probably going to be better off with another Oz kit, so this does definitely limit the Oxidizer's viability somewhat. If you're playing Athena, I'd say you're definitely going to want this Oz kit, and if you want to farm one, you can farm one from Rooster Booster in Stanton's Liver during or after the Grinder side quest mission. Number 2. The Systems Purge Oz Kit if you're looking for the closest thing to the B-Shield in Borderlands the pre-sequel, it might just be the System's Purge Oz Kit. However, unlike regular Amp Shields, which deal far more damage on a single shot, the System's Purge creates this interesting shockwave effect that deals damage in addition to knocking back enemies. Because this Oz Kit is based on the amount of O2 you have, you may find that this particular Oz Kit isn't quite as useful in a vacuum. However, in areas where O2 is plentiful, the player can use the system's purge to great effect to strip enemy shields as well as knock them around, making this a great Oz kit for quickly taking out enemies in an atmosphere. Alternatively, if you do play Claptrap, you may find that he can use this Oz kit in a vacuum more effectively thanks to his ability to not consume O2. However, even still, you may find that recharging the system's purge in a vacuum is a little difficult. Overall, the System's Purge is a nice offensive-based Oz kit, and if you want it, your best bet is to destroy Claplek during the Eradicate side quest that's located in the veins of Helios. Otherwise, your other option is to secure Claplek and get the Globber. However, I think you're going to find that the System's Purge is overall a much better piece of equipment. Number 1. The Eddie Oz kit. So, the Eddie Oz kit is a very unique Oz kit that has several different abilities. Among the most obvious are the improved O2 capacity, as well as the boosts to laser damage, shield capacity, and better airborne movement. However, the best part about Eddie is that it has random effects during combat. For example, Eddie can occasionally refill shields or health when these are low. Eddie can attack enemies with a shock tether when the player is struck by melee attacks, and when defeating an enemy, the Eddie can randomly release small packages containing things like health vials, additional ammunition, and money drops. When these random effects are combined with the flat stat improvements, you've got yourself a very powerful and very versatile Oz kit for any character. The only thing that would make this particular Oz kit better was if its slam damage component could come in other elements. By only coming in explosive, I've always found it to be somewhat limited, as I tend to prefer cryo slams over all of the others. Even still, this is a pretty minor complaint, and if you want this Oz kit, your best bet is to farm it from an enemy named Claplek that is located in the veins of Helios during or after the Eradicate side quest mission. Alright guys, I think that's going to wrap up this particular video. If you liked this video, feel free to leave a like, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload more videos, and as always, thank you all so much for supporting the channel, take care, and I'll see y'all in the next one.